Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Psalm chapter number 42, Psalm 42. And uh, oh, I am excited. The Bible is a wonderful book, God's book. It guides you, it directs you, and there's a lot of road signs in the Bible that help you. They encourage you to go in the right direction. And uh, oh, you, you ever been there? You know, you, 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 there's a sign on the side of the road. It, it says dip. And you, you see it, but you don't see it. And the next thing you know, it's like, wow, ah, And you hit the dip, and you're like, oh, my, that was not good right there. I should have paid attention to the sign. And there's things like that. You ever gone around a curve? In Colorado, going in the mountains, they have these curve aheads. And if you don't pay attention, all of a sudden you're going too fast around that curve. You're holding on for dear life. You know what I'm saying? You're like, then you're slowing down. And traveling through West Virginia, you ever, you ever traveled through West Virginia with a whole van load full of kids going down one of those? You know, they have a sign that has a 7% grade or something like that. And it says, caution, slow down. But you don't really pay attention to it. Then all of a sudden you're like, Oh my, it's going, you're going faster and you're faster. You're trying to push that brake, but the brake's not working. And you see that side of the road where they have those runoffs. And you're like, oh my, I don't want to use one of those runoffs. You know what I mean? There's a lot of road signs. We got to pay attention to those road signs. Here in chapter 42 and 43, there's a road sign. And it's a wonderful road sign that reminds us and tells us that we got to find our hope in God. Do you see the picture right there? Hope in God. Hope in God. Before you stand, I want you to, to look with me at 42. I'm going to read this chapter to you. It's a Psalm of David. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. And David's like, whoo, man, my heart's panting after God. I want to live for God. I, whoo, my soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before thee? Then it changes. My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? What happened? There's a change in there. So, you know, my, my heart's panting after the water brooks. My soul panted after thee, O God. My soul thirsted for God. Then it says, where is thy God? Verse four, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept a holy day. Then verse five, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. Do you see that? Say those words with me. Hope thou in God. Say that one more time. Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Now stop there for just a moment. There's a battle going on inside of David. His heart does pant after God. His soul thirsteth for God, the living God. He loves God. He cares for God. He wants to serve God. But there's a battle. There's some discouragement going on. And in that verse, verse number five, he's talking himself in. He's saying, I need to make a decision to hope thou in God. I need to make a decision to follow the roadmap. I know God's in control. I need to now make sure that my hope is not in myself or in my circumstance, but my hope's in the Lord. But the battle is raging inside of him. Look at verse six. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites and from the hill Mizar, deep calleth unto the deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me and, his, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Why art thou, now look at verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? What is this, the next four words? Hope thou in God. Say it again with me. Hope thou in God. One more time. Hope thou in God. Yet, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. 
in this chapter right there, hope thou in God's mentioned twice, and that's a road sign. There's, there's a man named David, a very famous man in the Bible, David who killed Goliath, David who eventually became king, but he had an inward battle sometimes when he's not looking at the right things. He's looking at his enemies. He's looking at his circumstances. And he knows that, that God's in control. He knows that he, he thirsts after God. He loves God. His heart pants after God. But, you know he, know, he knows he ought to hope thou in God. But there's a struggle inside of him. There's a struggle. And he's trying to say, I need to make that decision. I need to hope thou in God. Now, let's stand for the reading of chapter 43. Just five verses. And what I'll do is uh, we'll, we'll read uh, the whole chapter together. Let's read this all together, all together in unison, starting in verse number one. Are you ready? Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O oh God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O oh my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. The same chapter is very similar. There's a battle raging inside of David. There's a battle raging. He sees his enemies. He sees the struggles of life, and he's concentrating on those things, and it's caused him problems. He's discouraged, almost, you could use the word, depressed. He knows God's in control. He knows that God's on the throne, and in the end, he's talking himself into it. He's saying, hey, the answer is Hope in God, hope in God, hope in God, hope in God. And he's talking himself into making a decision to get back to hoping in God. Now, these are roadmaps for you and me. Hope thou in God, hope thou in God, chapter 42. Chapter 43, hope in God. And it's a reminder for us, sometimes we, we know God. Our, our heart pants after God. Our soul thirsts for that. That's why you're here tonight. That's why you go to church. That's why you read your Bible. That's why you have a Christian home. We know that. But sometimes the Christian, you, you, you're looking at the wrong things. You're looking at your enemy. Sometimes you're looking at the wrong things. You're getting discouraged. Sometimes you're looking at the wrong things and you're just like, oh, what's going on in my life? And this roadmap is saying, listen, remind yourself, hope thou in God, hope in God, and follow that roadmap back to that joyous life, hoping in God. Before we go any further, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Thank you for this great group of people here tonight and thank you for blessing us without a doubt all of us have days of struggle days of difficulties days where we're overwhelmed by maybe the enemy maybe our circumstances and maybe you had us go to psalm 42 and 43 night for a specific person or persons tonight maybe somebody's going through it even right now but lord i pray that you help us to be reminded to make a decision to hope in you we love you. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, wow. Look back with me. Psalm 43, verses 1 and 2. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is amazing. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against, un, what does it say? Ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For thou art a God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? And at this point in the psalm, David, by the psalm of David, we know David, David, that one who played the harp for King Saul, that one who was able to kill a lion and a bear with his bare hands, and the one that God used to kill Goliath, the one that became the king of Israel. But David was focusing on something. What, what do you focus on? That's point number one. What do you focus on? What do you focus on? Think about it. Say that with me. What do you focus on? Here at this point, David is focusing on the ungodly. He's focusing on the deceitful. He's focusing on the unjust. He's focusing on the enemy. And it's got him discouraged. Discouraged. 
You know, sometimes when we focus on the ungodly, the deceitful, the unjust, and the enemy, and our focus is on those things, we're not thinking right. We're discouraged. We're overwhelmed. We're like the water is uh, drowning us, you might say. By the way, the ungodly. There's a lot of ungodliness in the world today, is there not? A lot of ungodliness. You just seem to walk outside of your house and it just seems like ungodliness is around every corner, behind every tree. It's in the grocery store. It's on, well, you, you drive and you see some of the bumper stickers and it discourages you. You see some of those billboards and you see it and you, whoop, you look away like that and you say, I can't look at that. But it seems like wherever you go, ungodliness, the deceitful, deceitful, deceit is all around us. Deceit is all around us. I saw an article just this morning about a new book. There was, I guess in the Catholic Church, they use a lectionary, and I, I don't understand. It's a, it's a book of readings where they read it in the Catholic Church, I guess. And uh, so the, the, this lady rewrote the lectionary, and uh, it, was, it was an interesting article because she began to, of course, criticize the Bible, how the Bible's been wrong for all of these years and how God's a woman and, boy, the Holy Spirit's a woman. And the whole thing is, it, it sounded good. And the, the end of it, there was a lot of praise for this woman in her rewriting the lectionary about how it's wonderful. And I thought, man, what a deceit. Amen. What a deceit. People are being told a lie the, the criticism of the Bible. And, you know, when we look at the deceit, it can discourage you. The unjust. I wasn't treated fairly. By the way, man alive, you, you walk outside these doors, even in church, out of church, in your home, out of the home, at school, at work, this world is going to treat you unfairly. Amen. It's an unfair world we live in. And you'll begin to look at the enemy. The enemy is alive and well. Praise God, one day he'll be cast in that lake of fire. But the enemy is alive and well right now. He's as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's called the tempter. Amen. He's uh, the old sneaky snake. Uh, and uh, Boy, he's deceitful. And uh, he's one of the rulers of the darkness of this world. The truth is sometimes we, we, so the truth is sometimes I Focus on the wrong things. I'll say that again. Sometimes we, I'm going to narrow it down to me, sometimes I focus on the wrong thing, the negative. I focus on the ungodly. I focus on the deceitful, the unjust, the enemy. What about you? Do you ever focus on the wrong thing? Anybody ever focus on the wrong thing? Okay, just keep your hand up. Let me see right here. I'm looking for the people. And I'm just looking for the best. Silas, you're about the best. That You don't focus on the wrong thing ever. I'm going to talk to you after the church service about how I can be with the godly Silas, who's practically perfect in every particular way, just like his dad, right? Yep, that's right. Smart, smart young man. He's, look at that. He gave you credit right there, Brother Hatfield. Praise God for that. It's not fair. You know, life's not fair. I was thinking about it. I remember I was younger. And boy, 19, 20, 21 years of age, and my friends begin to have relationships with, you know, girls, they're getting married. And here I am, 21, 22, and it's not fair. You know, I want to get married. I want to be married, but it's just not fair. I mean, there's no girl for me. And, you know, the years go by, 23, 24 years of age, 25 years of age, and I'm not married. And in my way, there's a battle going on the brain this is not fair, and I focus on how unfair it is that all these other people are getting married, but I don't have a godly woman to marry. And that may not, not be for you, but for me, it was a big deal. And when I focus on that, all of a sudden, if I'm not careful, it can overwhelm me. Well, I'm gonna have to be lonely the rest of my life. I'm gonna have to this the rest of my life. And in that period of time, I, I thought back to that. You know, in reality, I didn't understand that God's plan was better than mine. And I had the wrong perspective of things. God was saving me for a perfect woman named Mandy. But in the midst of it, it just didn't seem that life was fair. And when I focused on that, boy, it brought me discouragement. Do you understand that? So what do you focus on? Look at verse number two. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? You know, when you're focusing on the wrong thing, it didn't mean David didn't know who his strength was. It, he said right there, thou art the God of my strength. It, it's not that he didn't know that. He knew that, but he wasn't living that. 
It's not that we sometimes don't know what's right. It's sometimes we don't live what's right. And so we know God is our strength. David knew God was his strength. Whenever this was written, I mean, he'd seen God work in miraculous ways in his life. He had seen how God had worked through him to kill Goliath. We'd seen how God worked through him in many different circumstances. God, or David knew God was his strength, knew he had no doubts. But even though he knew it, David not always lived that or think as God, God of his strength. You know, God is my strength. Then if God's my strength, why do I feel weak? If God is my strength, why do I struggle so much? If God is my strength, why go I mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? I know God's my strength, why am I struggling so much? I'm a Christian, why do I struggle? You ever struggle as a Christian? You ever struggle? Boy, we do right there. Well, you're just like David. David knew God was his strength, without a doubt, but he still struggled a little bit. We, we know the verse, you know the Psalms of David, like Psalm chapter 18, verse one. Uh, David said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Uh, Psalm 18, verse two, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Psalm 19, these are Psalms of David. Psalm 19, verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You know, we know God's our strength, yet sometimes we put it on the back burner. So we know God's our strength, sometimes we don't live it. I, I got a thousand verses, but you go, not a thousand, but a lot of verses that you go through. Just David uh, saying over and over again about God being his strength. Another example, Psalm 43, verse two, where, that's where we're at, for thou art the God of my strength. Have you ever met someone depressed, met someone discouraged, met someone who's cast down, and even a Christian? Someone who you've known as being strong in the Lord. Maybe, you know, a wife has her husband sometimes. You know, he, he knows that uh, her husband's a godly man, but he struggles sometimes. Or uh, maybe your godly wife, and you'll see your wife, she's a, uh, she knows the Lord is her strength right there, but she's struggling a little bit. Understand they're normal. We all go through times and difficulties like that. He goes a little bit further, verse number three. Look at this. David continues to talk. He says, Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me under the, let them bring me under thy holy hill into thy tabernacles. And, and David was saying, hey, I need, I need the truth. I need that truth and that light to guide me back to the holy hill and to the tabernacles, to the right place. And David knew what he needed. He needed the truth of God's word. David doesn't question, by the way, whether God is true. He knows God's true. By the way, you, you as a Christian, you don't question whether it's God, God's true. That's not your struggle. I don't believe that's your struggle. Most of you, I don't believe that's your struggle. We don't question whether God is true. We believe that, but sometimes we are not thinking right. Do you understand? Uh, David doesn't question whether God is true. David knows that God is truth. God has the answer. God is the light that's gonna bring me to the holy hill and to the tabernacles we know God's truth. We know he is perfect. We know that we need his word. But sometimes, you know, you know you need his word, but sometimes you don't read it. You know you need uh, the, the, thy lamp, uh, the, thy, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light in my path. You know it shows you where you're at and where you're going. You know you need it, but sometimes you avoid it. You avoid it. And that's that David's battling with right now. He knows God's word is gonna lead in the right path, but he's not prioritized it. Or he has sometimes doesn't run to God's word, he runs away from God's word. Now, th this is reality because sometimes we're like that. And if we understand that's the way we are sometimes, we can have help by the end of the chapter. Because when we find ourselves in that spot, we believe God's our strength, we believe God's word is the right, and this reminds us what to do where we're not permanently uh, you know, cast off, you might say, from you being usefulness. Not, not hell, I'm not saying that, but usefulness in the work of the Lord. You know, Psalm uh, chapter 19, David writes this. He says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart. And we could quote all those verses on the Bible and you know the importance of it. We know the book of Proverbs and the book of wisdom. And it's, it's wild that we know the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. We know faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we know we ought to read it to get our strength and, and we don't. 
We don't. And, and you know, that's what David is saying. He has the battles just like we do. Psalm 43, uh, verse three, oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. You remember the excitement. Do you remember the excitement you've had for God's word at times? And somehow, we have to be reminded that we ought to continue to have that delight in the law of the Lord. And sometimes we renew that love for the word of God. We have to renew that interest in reading the word of God, really day after day, week after week, year after year. I, I want to have delight in God's word, not just when I'm in my 40s and 30s and 20s. I want to delight in God's words when I'm in my 50s and 60s and 70s, and if the Lord allows me, in my 80s and 90s. And in order to do that, I have to remember it is God's word, but I need to have hunger and thirst after that righteousness right there. Look at verse number four. Look at this. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. But, it, but if I decide to follow the truth, David's saying, I know if I decide to follow that truth, it's going to lead me to joy. I know if I decide to follow God's word, it's going to lead me back to a good place. A place where I'm not depressed, I'm not overwhelmed, I'm not discouraged, I'm not depressed. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's so true. You see, this, we're all the same. We're sinners, saved by grace, trying to serve a perfect God. And we have a battle uh, with the flesh. And we should walk in the, the, the spirit and then you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. David was the exact same, same as we are. Paul's the same as we are. I remember meeting a young man and early 20s, and you know, I see this young man, he's, he struggles, but I see so much potential. And he wants to counsel with me and talk to me about life, and you know, he, he, he does love the Word of God. He does believe the Word of God is true, and you know, I try to encourage him, be faithful to church, be faithful to read your, your Bible, uh, do what the Lord wants you to do, no matter what it is. And this young man, excuses, 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 I know, Pastor, I know what God's word is true, but my parents in the past did this. I know God's word is true, but I struggle with sin. I know, Pastor, I, I know it's God's word. I know it's true. I know I need to follow it, but I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. And excuse, excuse, excuse. By the way, we've been there. We've made excuses. But we have to not uh, have excuses. And by the way, we get to the end of the message, it's, it's gonna say we need to make a decision. But this man with so much potential decided to cast off the Bible in, in his life. Next thing you know, he's not long after that, armed robbery, jail, prison. And, and you look at it, boy, he's no different than you and me. He believed the word of God, but he made excuses for not following the word of God. Which leads to this. This is the last point, verse number five. And, and I, I put the last point, it's, it's decision time. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Okay, stop. Have you ever been cast down? Maybe you are today. Maybe you will be this coming week. Maybe tomorrow. Why art thou cast down? Okay, look at the next one. Why art thou disquieted within me? It's a struggle, a difficulty, maybe depression. Maybe you're looking at the enemy. You're looking at the circumstances. You're looking at the, uh, the you're let down or somebody let you down or things didn't go your way. You're disquieted. Then the road sign is there. And if I could raise my, I would like to raise my vocals on this. Hope in God, it's a big road sign. It's like that dip sign, you know, dip on the way. You ignore it, it hurts when you hit that dip. It's just like that, that road sign where you have that 7% grade right there, and then you're like, the kids are sleeping, it's midnight, and you're going through there, and you're like, oh, this is not gonna be good if I have to go in one of those off ramps up in that sand, it's gonna hurt really bad. You know, I wish I would have paid more attention, but the sign's right there for you and me. Hope in God, hope in in God, hope in God, it's decision time. And it's important for you and me, for our families, for our church, for your, uh, just the rest of your life, to remember the road sign to hope in God. Find your hope in God, your hope in God. Nehemiah chapter eight, verse number 10 says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
Galatians chapter number five, verse 20, it says, but the fruit of the, the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. When you hope in God, you find your, 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 your eyes, okay, over here, discouragement, enemies, problems, difficulties, struggles, uh, people that are unjust, the deceit, the enemy, and we focus in on this, and we look at this, we just spend this, here's what we do. <laughs> and I look funny maybe doing this, but that, that's in reality, You've probably been there before. I have. I've been there. But our eyes are focused on the wrong thing. And the roadmap says, hey, it's, it's, by the way, the roadmap's right here, the Bible. It's right there. It's saying, hey, look that way. Look that, actually, look that way. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Look to Jesus. He'll bring you joy. Look to Jesus. He'll give you direction. Look to Jesus. Hope in God. Hope in God. Hope in God. It's not a one-time decision, but something we have to decide really again and again and again and again and be reminded. By the way, that's, that's why it's so important to just make a daily habit of reading the Bible. You don't read the Bible necessarily because right away you're, you're, you're delighting it. But You know, sometimes I read the Bible out of habit because I schedule it. But by, by the time I'm done reading the Bible, well, I'm glad I did. I feel good. There's joy in it. It's been good. I delight in it. But I don't always start, and I, I hate to admit that sometimes I don't always start that way. Now, see, why do I confess all of my sins to you? See, I feel like all alone right here today, right here. And so, praise the Lord. But the Bible, that daily reading of the Bible helps me. By the way, church does. I know I'm the pastor. I have to, I have to go to church. I, I get to go to church, but I have to go to church. But, but I had to go to church a long time before that. Why? Because I need the preaching of God's word. I need that. Now, have I ever gone to church and not been too excited about sitting in front of that long-winded preacher? Yes. Yes. But after I get done, I'm glad I did. It's helped me, pointed me to scriptures. Do you understand that? And so you get in that habit. You're setting yourself up to be in a place where you hope in God, hope in God, hope in God. Ending with this, Brother Stallings has gone through it with his health. Man. He's got a problem with the lumbar in his back and constant pain right now, constant pain. He can't get comfortable. He's got a heating pad that he basically lays on and tries to get comfortable as best he can. And uh, boy, he's struggling. He needs to have an endoscopy in his, in his uh, be belly and just going through battle with his health. He's 80, you know, his wife passed away. He's got a problem with his stomach, with, the, with seemingly like a hernia and difficulties like that. But, you know, talking to Brother Stallings, if he, if he looked at the enemy and his circumstances and all of that, it could be discouraged. But Brother Stallings is not, not discouraged. You talk to him, and he is like, he's on top side. Amen. He's trusting in God, believing in God. He, when I talked to him today, man, he's encouraging me. He said, Pastor, you need to come by and uh, bring me some chili. <laughs> Enjoy some Christian fellowship with you. And uh, he's just got the joy of the Lord. And how can he have the joy of the Lord when he goes through so much? Because his hope is not in his circumstances or even how our nation's going or the enemy around us. His hope is in God. And those roadmaps right there are found in uh, Psalm 42 and Psalm 43. Hope in God. Say that with me one time. Hope in God. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Thank you for giving us the precious gift of Psalm 42 and 43. Boy, I'm thankful for that road sign. I pray that I, in my brain, as circumstances, difficulties, sometimes things don't go my way, and I begin to look at things, I pray that I look at that road map or that road sign and follow them back to finding my hope in you. And God, I'm thankful for this. Uh, boy, God, you're the author and finisher of our faith. You've given us so much. And Lord, I pray you help somebody specifically, maybe here tonight, that's been going through some difficulties. Maybe somebody's been unjust. Maybe the enemy has surrounded them, Lord. I pray that you help them to take their eyes off the enemy and the unjustness in their life and look to you. Lord, I pray you bless us. We love you. You're a good God. In Jesus' name, amen.